All right, hey everybody, Leroy Diesel coming to you with a little bit different video today. I'm down here in Houston area on the coast and we get a lot of hurricanes and it's August and we just missed uh, the hurricane Ernesto. Actually, we didn't just miss it, but it missed the United States. And there's other stuff out there in the Gulf, or not in the Gulf, but coming out from Africa right now. So I wanted to get my generator hooked up on natural gas and so I'm going to kind of show you a pretty cool thing. Some people are aware of this and some people are not. When I saw that, anyway, it's the generator over here, but when I saw it could run on dual fuel, being propane and gasoline, I thought, well, why can't it run on natural gas, like a lot of other generators that are tri-fuel, and it, there's no reason you can't. It will run on natural gas. And here I've got the propane tank, but you can see it's disconnected. The hose is right here. And so if I want to, I can hook that up to the generator, run it on propane. And the way I have it now over there, I got it just hooked up and tapped into my house with the natural gas. One thing about this box is, it's pretty cool. I was looking for an enclosure that would be suitable. And so I looked all over the uh, hardware store and couldn't really find anything and everything was expensive. And I ran across this 30 amp uh, receptacle box. It's kind of designed for, uh, I don't know exactly what it's designed for, but I guess if you're trying to hook up 30 amps into your house or something, you could power your house with something like this. But anyway, it gives you a nice little box that you can put the quick disconnect on. I've got a shut off valve in here come out to a street L, coming down to a quick disconnect, and then the hose is a quick disconnect there. Let's see if I can just show you what that is real quick. Try to keep you in the viewfinder here. Okay, so I'm gonna turn the, valve, the gas off. So that's all it is, just quick disconnect back on and so what was pretty neat about going that route with the um, electrical box version of it this guy is that matches the uh, 30 amp that's on the generator so if I ever want to do something with this on the back side it's just a regular outlet box I can unscrew this and use it for whatever purposes I want to in the future. So I'm just gonna hang on to that. So it, it only cost me like, I don't know, $2 or something more to get a box that had this in it versus just an empty box similar to what you see there. So anyway, gotta be smart when you're shopping. Then I got the hose. I actually got this one at Harbor Freight. Uh, Home Depot will have a very similar hose, but I think it's only 10 feet long, or maybe they have other selections, I don't know. What I was, what I found was the one they had for 10 feet, and it was for, for hooking up a natural gas grill for your outdoor grill uh, to natural gas. So anyway, you see it's all plumbed in here. And what I had to do is I put a natural gas regulator on it, but I'm not convinced yet. I'm gonna try, I'm gonna experiment uh, putting um, that quick connect hose on here. I'm going to take that off. I've got another setup. I should have had it ready to go. I, and that way I can plug this whole setup straight into natural gas. But what I have to do is put that needle valve you see right there on with it also. And I believe that will get me started up and fired up and running just fine i'm going to experiment with that if it works out i'll let you know so what i'm going to do here i'm going to set the tripod up again Let's see if that will balance okay so what happens is because the needle valve is adjustable it takes me two or three sometimes four attempts at starting the generator before it starts. You've got to almost close the valve 
all the way, I would say all the way, and then back it off approximately one turn, and then try to start the generator, and then you're just gonna have to experiment till you find that sweet spot. And then as you'll notice, it'll be a little too loud for me to talk, but this has a very quiet generator. Um, but once it fires up, then I'm gonna open up that valve and I'll fine tune that valve and you'll hear, you'll hear the engine come up in RPM and the lights will come on and everything will be good to go. It would be ready to do its job at that point. So here we go, I'm gonna to try to fire it up. let that gas run for a second to prime it up first try Super solid right now. Let me adjust that. I think I'm giving it too much gas. Right there. has the eco mode on it also that means it will idle down and then when power is called for it will ramp up the engine speed again and give you your full wattage and voltage all that good stuff so that's pretty cool i just wanted to show you guys that um, you could also pull start it if you wanted to let me shut this off Actually, I did do that a little bit wrong. I like to shut off the gas to kill the engine. Although, because it's gas, it's not like gasoline. So, it's, that gas is already out of there. It's just everybody I recommends shutting off the gas to kill the motor. Um, so, there's no gasoline in this thing. It's literally brand new. This thing probably will never see gasoline. Uh, propane is available most of the time when we have hurricanes around here and uh, I've never been without it and but there's sometimes there have been long lines but I go to a propane station I don't go to Home Depot or someplace like that and do the exchange of bottles seems like they run out pretty quick um, but I go to some place that actually fills the bottle you get more propane in the bottle when they do that and so you can go longer time on a bottle but um so that's about it really this was sort of a review this this model number is the iGen 4000 dfc uh, so far i'm pretty impressed with it i researched these things pretty hard i wanted the iGen 11000 dfc but those were unavailable and literally I got a text today saying that they're back in stock. So that's always Murphy's Law. So what I was gonna do is buy two of these, parallel them to give me, it won't be 8,000 watts, especially on natural gas. That's the least powerful fuel of the three. So your wattages are less than what the rated on the bot, on the, you know, on the, what they spec there. So on propane, it might, I don't know exactly what the numbers are, but just rough numbers. And for example, it's 4,000 starting watts, but let's say running watts is 3,600. On propane, that knocks it down to, let's say 3,400. And then on natural gas, it knocks it down again. On gasoline is where their ratings are, because that is the most powerful fuel, most energy dense fuel of the three choices. But what's nice is, I can sacrifice some of that if I can run this straight to my house. I don't have to run and get fuel anywhere as long as they don't shut off the natural gas, which literally has never, 
ever happened here in this part of Texas that I ever have known about. Um, so that's it. I uh, just wanted to show you guys that. Any questions? This is not really an iGen 4000 DSC review, but I did not see any review, so I'm going to post it up kind of like it's a review. But it was mainly to show you how to hook up your natural gas that it will run on natural gas. And um, all I had to do is TN. Forgot to tell you about this part. And I had this all opened up and I was going to video it, but then I was having troubles getting the generator started and I was like, oh, screw it. I got to get it all back together. But anyway, basically I pulled all this apart where I could get in there and we did this metal siding on this chimney like several years ago. Not that it matters, but um, so I pulled that off where I could get in there and then my natural gas fireplace was plumbed in back there. So I teed in ran a flexible gas hose like those yellow hoses you see for hooking up a hot water heater or whatever so i ran it from a, the t up to the back of this box and then just tr uh, i can't remember what fitting i used but i had a washer on it and a coupling which basically acted like a bulkhead fitting and it worked perfectly put that through the box drilled a hole large enough in the metal siding so that that could go in there and sit flush. Then it's three screws, zip that down, and there's my little box. So again, it worked out pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I sure don't want a hurricane. I'd rather not have the hurricane and be ready for it than to get a hurricane and need this thing. And uh, that's it. As always, if you need anything, uh, not really rela related to this video, but as you guys know, go to LeroyDiesel.com. Um, I'm not going to really be able to help you if you need parts or generator questions or anything like that. But my regular guys, you know, as always, if you need anything, let me know. Have a good day. Bye.